e-corporative this together is put together by ecooperative.africa ecooperative.africa is an online platform that encourages people to come together raise funds for their projects ecooperative.africa is also a platform that enables you to sell you can sell your products your services your ideas on the platform I'm sure in the next few hours, the next few days, the platform will be launched and it's still going through better testing right now where you can sell your product, you can sell your services to members of the community and beyond just members of the community, you can also sell those products and services to people outside of the community. e Africa also enables you to download and save in cryptocurrency, whether in Bitcoin or USDT through the BitNop app e cooperative um, that Africa enables you to raise as much as 4.6 million Naira from a 2,000 Naira investment by building a team through a 4 by 4 matrix. It's a powerful opportunity. And you have the option of, you know, crowdfunding. You have the option of saving. You have the option of getting a loan. You have the option of investment of investing so 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 e of africa is, again beyond that as you make contributions for every level as you make contributions at level one and down to level two level three level four e corporate that africa also makes sure that you you get quality information uh, you have access to information that can help you move your business forward so it's a fantastic platform it's not a ponzi or a pyramid it's a business with a lot of value, information value, and it's a cooperative online. So I want to welcome some of you that are just joining for the first time. That's a nutshell of what eCooperative.Africa is all about. It's a cooperative online that allows you to learn, allows you to build your team, to save, you know, to, 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 to there's an MLM part of it that enables you to generate money from the first level you start earning big. From the first level, you start earning big. The moment you get your first sign up, you get back your money. The first investment you put in is 2000 naira. The moment you get your first sign up, someone that can join you in raising funds, join you in also selling on the platform, join you to enjoy the value added information there, join you to do what you're doing. The moment that person joins the team, you get back your money immediately. So you don't lose. From then onwards, you don't lose at all. At your first level, you get 8K, 1,000 Naira, and all that money is all yours to spend. And you can choose to upgrade to the next level. Whether or not you upgrade, the business will still continue. So I'm sure that somebody's um, details is still filtering in. Um, this person hasn't muted the sound yet. The person's um, Galaxy A11. Okay, has just done that now. All right. So welcome everyone. We're going to go on a very long journey and I'm sure that we have the best of minds come to teach us today. Uh, let me begin by saying, giving us a few ground rules. This is the opportunity for you to invite Galaxy A11. You need to mute your sound. You need to mute your camera and mute your sound. Else, this is the last warning. You'll be thrown out of this platform. You need to mute your sound. You need to mute your sound. Else, you'll be kicked out of the platform. All right, so um, as we begin to understand this, uh, a few ground rules, invite your prospect. Like I've said severally on this platform, the best way to get people to buy into your business, the best way to get people to join this business is not to force them, it's not to manipulate them, it's not to deceive them, it's not to tell them all kinds of lies and promises. That's not the best way. The best way to get people to join this business is to invite them to come to seminars like this, WhatsApp meetings, Zoom meetings like this. Most of you are still doing Zoom meetings, still doing WhatsApp meetings. Let them come and hear first. Give them that opportunity to hear first, after which they can choose to join the business or not. That's a thing that is an ethical and better way to do it. You are not supposed to have 
everybody in your team. Some of you are already complaining about no people not making progress, people not upgrading because you just got every dick and Harry to join your team. The best way to succeed in this business is to choose, is to sort out people and not have everybody join your team. So that's very important. I want to begin today by the first, being the first person to teach. My name is George Asian. I'll take you straight to my slides and then we will begin. We'll begin to see how you can make some very powerful progress. Okay, let's see how this goes. I want to share with you something very, very important. Something very important today that will let me just be, be the one to begin. Okay. So I'd like you to pay attention carefully because we're looking at something very important. Some of the thoughts we've shared before, I think it's important that we just pay attention to them very closely because they are the foundation of wealth. So if you're looking for a topic to write down and document, let us talk today about investors and entrepreneurs. Investors and entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. What does it mean to be an investor? What does it mean to be an entrepreneur? What are the different kinds of investors that we have available? And what are the different kinds of entrepreneurs we have? I like to say this as a foundation that if you want to be rich, financially successful, you have to be either an investor or an entrepreneur. If you're going to be wealthy in this life, you have to either be an investor or and entrepreneur. So my name is George Asen. I'm a member of e Corporated Africa. I'm also involved in massive trainings. I want to share with you some ideas that will help you increase your personal economy, that will help you improve your finances. And I want you to pay attention to a lot of the ideas that I'll be sharing with you today. I want to introduce you to a certain man. I probably told you about him before, and most of you are aware of this man, but I'd like you to pay attention to him. I want you to go to YouTube, download or watch his videos. I'd like you to buy his book when you go to the bookshop next time because his thoughts on finance and on money is very, very revolutionary. A lot of people, not, not many people have brought out ideas as, re, as regarding money, like this man called Robert Kiyosaki. He's a second gen, generation Japanese American who has built a business around the education of money, money education. He first wrote the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Rich Dad, Poor Dad was a best-selling book. I first got encounter, I first encountered that book in the year 2002 when my friend's mother came from the United States of America and brought that book back. I had the privilege of reading it for one week, but after, of course, after that, I had the opportunity to read it again, buy the book, have my own copy. I still have my own copy of that man's book, first book, Rich Dad Poor Dad, first best-selling book. And he has written other books, one of which is this one titled Cash Flow Quadrant. You see, at the end of the day, if you're truly wealthy, you're as wealthy or as rich as your cash flow. You know, we'll discuss that shortly, your cash flow. And so he's, he came up with a concept, you know, a guide, he calls this one cash flow, a guide to financial freedom. So he has written other books, and these are classic books. These are books you need to have in your library. These are books you need to read again and again and again. It's a book you need to underline and follow the underlining philosophy. If you are a networker, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're an, an investor, if you're a business person, these are the books you should have in your library. The first one is the business of the 21st century. And trust me, in highlighting this book, Robert Kiyosaki said, one of the businesses of the 21st century is network marketing. One of the businesses of the 21st century, I will add, is e-commerce. 
One of the businesses of the 21st century is mini importation, you know, getting products that are very valuable from some other place, bringing them to a certain platform and selling them. One of the platforms you must be actively involved in social media. So um, multi-level marketing, e-commerce, drop shipping, mini importation, digital marketing, all of these you know, will be the business of the 21st century. But he focused on one particular business, which he highlighted in that first book. Second book that would truly help you know how to keep your money, where to keep your money. You know, even at that time when he wrote this book, he did not see, he, he just told us not to keep our money in fiat currency. Fiat currency is actually um, your Naira, your dollar, your pound sterling, your Canadian dollar, your Australian dollar, your Chinese yen, your Ghana CDs, that, your Naira. That's fiat money. And because of inflation and market forces affecting the value, so the value of 100,000 Naira a year ago is not the same value of 100,000 Naira today. So that book enables you to choose where to keep your money, where you keep your money, where you store your money. And of course, most of us have been hearing about the cryptocurrency revolution. The world has been trying to fight it, but it truly cannot fight. It's here to stay. And so that book enables you to choose where to keep your money. There are people who convert their finances, their cash into tangible assets tangible assets like gold in that book he talks about how you must start start thinking of tangible assets like gold buying actual gold and keeping the gold because gold keep increasing in value and he also and he also suggests you buying getting involved in real estate real estate that may be cheap now but in the future can rise in value so you don't keep money in the bank because the banks don't keep money there the banks trade with your money. The banks invest in, um, in assets that increase, that multiply. So that book is very interesting. And that's the classic book, 20 years, you know, rich dad, poor dad. These are books you need to have in your diary. A few, a few quotes by this great man, Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki said something striking. He said, the poor and the middle class work for money. The rich have money work for them. When will you come to that point in your life where you will stop working for money? When we are earning a salary, when we are even working in businesses, but you keep working for money every now and then, when would you come to that point in your life where you start having money work for you? It takes a transition in mentality. There has to be a mental shift from thinking about the way you've been doing things to other ways. Those are a few ideas we we'll share with you today. That quotation is very strong. He also says, Robert Kiyoki, he says, the philosophy of the rich and the poor is this. The rich invest their money and spend what is left. The poor spend their money and invest what is left. The, the rich invest their money and spend what is left. The poor spend their money and invest what is left. Are you in that category? Can you say you're poor? Most times you get money and the first thing you're thinking is how to buy liabilities, how to invest in luxuries that will diminish, that, have, that will diminish, that will disintegrate, that will take money from you or have high maintenance value. You're not thinking about how to invest, where to keep it where to keep your money, where to multiply, how to compound. That kind of thinking, if you already have it, shows that you're a worthy person. The other way, the reverse, shows that you are a poor person. And these are strong quotes by this man. And this is another very important quote. He said, in the real world, the smartest people are people who make mistakes and learn. In school, the smartest people are people who don't make mistakes. So we are in the real world, folks. We're in the real world. Make your mistakes, most of you have made your mistakes, it's our hope that through these 30 days of Fit Gear, Fit Gear Business Series and Financial Series, you will learn a lot of ideas, a lot of strategies that will help you to move your business forward. Please take it very seriously. All right, so this is this quadrant. A quadrant is, you know, this thing is what they call a quadrant. And it calls it the cash flow quadrant. And it basically explains the, the total philosophy of Rebecca Kiyosaki. Okay. Most of us have seen it. Most of us have probably read it. Most of us know it. Some of you don't know it, but this is the quadrant. It says that people and their finances are divided into four. 
you have the left side and you have the right side. We have E standing for employees. A lot of us are employees. In this part, what we do is that our amount of, of active work determines our income. We have to be actively involved. By tomorrow, Monday, we're going 9 a.m. to um, whether 2 p.m. or 4 p.m., 9 to 5, whatever. I don't know what your work schedule is, but we're employees. We, we sell our time. We trade our time to earn money. And I've told you that wealthy people, truly wealthy people, are very particular about their time. They don't trade their time. They don't sell time. If they sell their time at all, they sell their time to learn, not just to earn. The apprentice, they intend, but they don't sell their time in perpetuity. They give themselves a timeline where they get to leverage on time. So, but what the employee does all the time is that he gives eight hours of his time in order to get money. Then the, the same left quadrant from your, from your, from your direction is S, self-employed people that are worse off. What they also do is that at the amount of active work determines income. They also sell time in order to get money. In this case, the first employees have an employer that gives them money, but for self-employed people, they are the ones who are both the employers and the employees, like the dentist, like the doctor, the mechanic, the vulcanizer, the person who actually, you know, must be there, the fashion designer, you must be there for the business to work. The day you don't come to work, it doesn't work. But now that's the people on the left side. On the right side are a different kinds of kind of people. For you to move from the left side to the right side, you need to have a different kind of mindset. And let me assure you, it is not easy. A lot of you think that you are on the left, on the on the right side. A lot of you assume that you're on the right side. A lot of you wish that you're on the right side. A lot of you pray that on your right, on the right side. But your activities and the outcomes and the results you're currently having right now shows whether you're on the left or on the right. The people who are going to be rich and the people who are headed towards wealth are on the right side. That does it mean that people that are employees don't get money? Yes, they get money. You see that they get money, but they give their time for it. Does it mean that the self-employed people don't get money? They get money, but they give their time for it. What do the people on the right side do different? You see them. Income does not de depend on active work. So for the business owner, income does not depend on their active work. What do they do? So they have employees or they have people or they have teams or they have systems i'll repeat myself business owners have people or they have employees or they have teams or they have systems in order to get money so they understand how to leverage on people they understand how to leverage other people's time other people's ideas other people's contact so they also understand the power of systems we talked about leverage the other time they understand the power of systems and they're always thinking towards that direction all the time is that the business owners and then the last set of people on the right side are the investors what do investors do the income does not depend on the active for what they do is that they use money to make more money for you to be an investor you need to have money you have enough money. For you to be a real investor that makes more money, you need to think in terms of how do I get my money to work for me. So that is a quadrant that, that Robert Kiyosaki put. I'm sure most of you are aware of it. But it's just good to remind ourselves, to be conscious, to, mind, to find out where am I in my current state? Have you done a financial audit to yourself? Where am I? Really? Where am I really? Must I be there? If you fall sick today, if you fall sick today, would you still earn salary? Would you still earn money? If you are not actively involved for whatever reason, if you go out for a vacation, would you still have money available for you? If you're not thinking along those directions, if you don't have people who, you don't have a team or a system, then you are still on the left side. And look what it says again, you have a job. Self-employed, you own a job. Business owners, you own a system and people work for you. Investment money work. So those are the quadrants that you have. So let's now 
let me just say this now. So we're going to be focusing on the business owners or what we call the entrepreneur and the investor. So our, co our concept on our topic today is the investors and entrepreneurs. What makes them? So, okay, let us assume that you have decided to be an entrepreneur. What does it mean to be an entrepreneur? Okay, okay, let's just, let's assume that you said, okay, I am an entrepreneur. What does it mean to be an entrepreneur? I'm going to look at a few things quickly. There are different types of entrepreneurs. And I want to run you through the different types of entrepreneurs you have. So you can determine for yourself where and who you are. That's where it begins. You know, change begins with discovery. Progress this, this, this begins with identification. Once you identify who you are, you cannot make progress. Most of you are even struggling in your current business because you have not identified what type of entrepreneur you are. So we're going to look at some few types of entrepreneurs. We have people that, call the, we are, that are called the technical entrepreneurs. By the name, it just shows that they are technically good. If they are not careful, if they're not careful, they will still fall under the self-employed people. The technical entrepreneurs are people who are good with their hands. They are skillful. They are knowledgeable. They're the ones that create the product. They are the software engineers. They're very smart. Okay. But what makes them truly entrepreneurs or business owners is that they have a team of people they are working with. They also have a system they're working with. And because of that, they're not just self-employed employ technical people, they are technical business owners. Because I'll give you an example of someone who falls into that category. One person that falls very strong in the category of a technical entrepreneur is Mark Zuckerberg. Now you see that Mark Zuckerberg is an architect, he's, he's an architect rather, he's a software architect. He can, he designed the entire Facebook concept and he has bought over, over a period of time, WhatsApp and Instagram, and he keeps monopolizing the social media industry. So he is an, a, a typical example. He is the epitome of a technical entrepreneur. So if his employees decide to leave, he can go to the system, he can go to the server, he can go to the computer and he will do the work. But beyond just doing it on his own, he understands the power of systems. He un understands the power of procedures. He knows how to leverage and work with people. So he has the best of minds working with him. So he's not just a self-employed technical person. He's a technical entrepreneur who understands the power of system. Mm -hmm. Another person that also falls into that category is Steve Wozniak. Most of you do not know that the technical guy behind this entire business of Apple is Steve Wozniak. There are, there are two Steves that own, that co-own the Apple enterprise, the Apple conglomerate, Apple, Apple 13, iPhone 13 right now. That's amazing. I mean, Apple has a lot of, they have their MacBook, they have their Mac, um, their Mac laptops. This guy is the technical guy. He's a technical guy. So you want to ask yourself that question. Am I a technical entrepreneur? Am I good maybe in fashion designing, in making cakes? Yes, that's technically good. Am I that one that is a fashion entrepreneur? Please, if you're just joining this team, um, this Zoom call, I'd like you to mute your sound so you don't interrupt people's phone. And that's him there, working with his friend, Steve Jobs. That's um, them, in, I think, 1979 or 1981, around that year. That's the two of them standing. And that's Steve Wozniak mm -hmm. and Steve Jobs, both co-founders of Apple. Please, if you just join in, I'd like you to mute your sound or you skip out. If you just join in, I'd like you to mute your sound or you'll be kicked out. All right. So the, the, the second kind of entrepreneurs that we have are called marketing entrepreneurs. You want to find out what kind of entrepreneur am I? Am I a marketing entrepreneur? Am I the one giving to marketing? And I often tell why I say the fastest way to be an entrepreneur is to start to sell. The fastest way to be in business is to start to sell. But am I not just a marketing a marketer, but a marketing entrepreneur, a man who knows how to mobilize other marketers to go out there and achieve goals? Am I a marketing entrepreneur? The, a typical example is Steve Jobs. Now, Steve Jobs, who is a marketer and a marketing entrepreneur, who knows how to build a sales team and a sales force, 
partnered strategically with Steve Wozniak, who is a technical entrepreneur, and they built the Apple enterprise. Today, he's not alive, and the other man is still alive. They're still running the Apple uh, conglomerate. And he said, but when he was alive, he was the one who will promote, who will advertise, who will be the, he was a spokesman. He was the face of Apple. In fact, people thought he was the Apple entrepreneur, but he was a marketing entrepreneur. He wanted to find out, where do I fall in in my business, technical or marketing? So there's another kind of entrepreneur. Some people are not technical, some people are not marketing, some people are managerial in tendency. They're more administrative. They are pragmatic, they are meticulous, they are detailed, they know how to understand, they know how to create systems, they know how to follow procedures. What kind of person are you in the light of what we are discussing today? Are you the manager entrepreneur? Typical example of somebody who falls somewhat to this is Gimovia. I don't know if you know who Jim Ovia is. Now, Jim Ovia is the CEO, the chief, chief executive officer of Zenith Bank and all of the enterprises associated with it. You know, he is that man, that man who knows how to manage, manage things. Listen, if you don't join the system, you have to mute your sound or you will be kicked out. This is your last warning. All right, so we're talking about Jimovia. Jimovia is that man who falls into that category. I mean, he, he, he built Zenibank, Forbes Africa has done some things on him. I think this was in 2000 or what? I can't, 2013. He was worth about $825 million. I'm sure he's worth much more than that. They call him the godfather of banking. Great manager. I'm sure most of you have bank accounts with Zenith Bank. I do have a bank account with Zenith Bank and I made a fantastic business. He falls into the category of that quintessential manager who is also an entrepreneur who has a, a, a large team. Let's look at another set of people. Atone Elimelu also falls into that category of someone who is a manager entrepreneur who knows how to manage things. And he's, a, he's the CEO of United Bank Africa. UBA, he bought over UBA a few years ago. He first started Trust Bank. And of course, there are many other managers that fall into that category. We have another kind of entrepreneur called the dreamer entrepreneur. Are you a dreamer entrepreneur? That you dream about things. You, you don't do the things others want. You know, they don't do the traditional, conventional things. You're always dreaming. You're always seeing things, dreaming dreams, having visions, thinking about estates, thinking about inventions, thinking about innovations, coming up with concepts. You're the one that wants to create things, create books, create products, create services, turn things around. You're that kind of person. You may not be technically good. You may not know the, the details. You may not have the understanding of the, the systems. You may not be able to manage, but you are the dreamer all the time. Ideas keep coming to you. You may just be a dreamer entrepreneur. One man that falls into that category very well. And you want to go Google him up and check him out. He's one of the richest men in Britain. His name is Sir Richard Branson. Sir Richard Branson is a dreamer. He suffered from dice, uh, he's dyslexic. That means he's not a very good student. He dropped out from school, but he has dreams. He has plenty, close to 200 groups, 200 businesses, um, virgin, virgin cola, virgin condoms, virgin trains, virgin Atlantic, virgin hotel. I mean, different kinds of person. Another person now recently, he travels to space, virgin Galactica. 
He traveled, he did a travel to space for two weeks. He was, in, he was after the Earth Airport orbit. He was the first, and he is the first, okay, he was the first billionaire to travel out of space because after that, um, Jeff Bezos also did the same thing. That's the kind of person he's a dreamer. Came up with Virgin Atlantic and literally took British, British um, Airways to the cleaners took over the aviation industry in Britain when he became, when he got into that space. Today, he has redefined what tourism and what air travel is. Air travel is going out of space. In the next few years, people will now say, oh, they will not be thinking about traveling to Dubai or to the Maldives, to Seychelles or to Trinidad and Tobago. They'll be thinking about traveling to space, traveling to Mars. So the men who come up with the businesses and the ideas, I mean, he spent close to a billion dollars just to, or more than that, just to set to go, go up to space. The men who are going ahead of others, they are dreamers. We have them like that. We have Elon Musk, who is um, creating electric cars, believing that fossil fuels will soon give way to renewable energy and to electric cars. Are you a dreamer entrepreneur like Elon Musk? I mean, he also has created a plane, a jet, a rocket that will go into that space. Are you? That kind of person, that's his, that's the vehicle. The certain vehicle right now, he created, he's the one who created electric cars. And one of those days, he, he launched a car with a man robot inside the car and they set it out of space to orbit the Earth, to orbit to, as a prelude for what would happen in the future. And that's the plane there, and that's the man there, driving in space just there, going around the earth. And to go on for 500 years, just keep going up into the earth for 500 years. Prelude that we are going to do all of that and much more. Isn't that amazing? One African man who falls into the category of a dreamer entrepreneur is Aliko Dangote. Aliko Dangote does salt, does, he does um, cement, he does sugar, and he's a big player in that space. He does not know how to mix soil. He doesn't know how to make create cement. He doesn't understand those technicalities. And more recently, he's building the largest refinery in Africa, or some people say in a large part of the world. He's a dreamer. He's seen ahead, seen ahead, and he falls into that category. Now, there are other kinds of entrepreneurs. I'd like to go talk about them. Celebrity entrepreneurs. Who are celebrity entrepreneurs? Like the name implies, these guys are stars. They are musical stars, comedic comedians. They are comics. They are they are um, pastors. They are you know, actors. People who have become artists, who become very prominent, and because of their stardom, they still have business sense. You know, it's possible for you to be a star, possibly to be a, a celebrity and not have business sense, but they are celebrity entrepreneurs. And you look at people like um, Don Jazzy, you look at people like, like um, uh, what's this guy's name? What's this guy's name? This American dude, that's one of the richest men, the man who got married to Beyonce's Beyonce. What's that his name? Again? I'll remember his name shortly. Okay. Jay-Z, that's his name. You know, Puff Daddy, these are P Daddy, 50 cents. And you wonder, they're now becoming um, Dr. Dr. They are now becoming very wealthy, Kanye West. Meanwhile, they don't have very popular songs anymore. They leverage on their popularity. The money they made from music, the money Madonna and Michael Jackson, the, the, all of the money they made didn't come from, they didn't come from their musical um, pieces they got the money and they invested in all kinds of things like dr dre became a billionaire kanye west has not been certified as a billionaire kim kardashian has just became a billionaire these are celebrity entrepreneurs and you know these are people who are celebrity entrepreneurs africans or nigerians who are celebrities know how to confuse their stardom to build massive businesses. So the next kind of people, and you want to find out whether you are that, are called intrapreneurs. So we have entrepreneurs and we have intrapreneurs. Who are intrapreneurs? Now, for me, I believe that if you are starting out in business, if you're a young person and you are starting out in business, it's always good to first begin as an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is, or entrepreneurs are in business for themselves 
but they are not in business by themselves. What do we mean by that? It simply means that these people, these people are distributors of certain products and certain services. They are people who have chosen to own a franchise. They buy a franchise for a company, an established brand, maybe McDonald's or Chicken Republic. Most of the Chicken Republics and Tasty Fried Chicken that you see in your communities, in your areas, are not directly from the source. They are franchised. Um, the franchisees actually got them. They got them, paid a certain amount of money. So they have a lot of supports from the front. The, the franchise from Tasty Fried Chicken or for, from uh, any of the companies. You understand when my, Mr. Biggs was everywhere. So the people who bought that franchise are called entrepreneurs. Okay, let me make it, bring it more down. We have distributors of Dangote. We have distributors of Pepsi, distributors of Coca-Cola. Those people brandish their buildings with um, that drink. They are not really they're not really going, they're using the other, the, the major brand to push the business. That is the those that are also called entrepreneurs. They are not entrepreneurs. You see, like Samsung, can you become Samsung, then you not become a distributor of Samsung products. All right. You get you branded the whole building as Samsung, you are an entrepreneur. You are you telecommunications, MTN, or you have everything there, and then you're selling your you an entrepreneur. You're not an entrepreneur. Because they give you their system, they they pay tax for you, they they they, they push they're pushing the brand. They're the ones that pay for adverts. All they give you all the support system. Another set of people that are entrepreneurs are the network marketers, those who represent companies, supplements, and they are also called entrepreneurs. They are in business for themselves. They earn commissions, but they're not in business by themselves. Else. They have all the support system. They don't have to keep inventory. They have all the support, all of that. Like, and it's a fantastic way to begin, a fantastic way to take off for a young person, for a person who, wants, who is an employee and who is trying to get into major entrepreneurship before you jump from the left side, the right side as an entrepreneur. Sometimes it can be very drastic. Sometimes you can lose all your money. You may need to just go through the pathway of entrepreneurship, of having a strong support system, a team, an upline, sideline. So network marketers also fall into these categories of entrepreneurs. So that, that is just a few things I like to mention about who entrepreneurs are. Again, entrepreneurs are people who are on the right side of that quadrant that brand, um, Richard, Rich, Richard Kiyosaki puts out. And they're, they're on the right side and they work with people, they work with systems, they work with team. They work with people, they work with systems, they work with teams. And that's how they gain leverage. That's why they're able to make money. They, they're not, they must not be actively involved in the entire process. They don't understand the concept of leverage and it does help them. Let's quickly just quickly breeze on investors and then we'll probably call it a day for today. I hope you've gotten these things. So I want you to reflect. My goal for you today is to sit down back at home and see who am I? If I want to move to the right side, who and what am I? Okay, so let's look at quickly about the investors. The man you're seeing there in the picture who is driving you know, a rake with dollars pulling it, his name is Grant Don. I failed to put his picture. I want you to go on, go on YouTube and check out for that man. If you are involved in business, in real estate, in marketing, in sales, you need to follow Grant Cardon. G-R-O-A-N-T-C-A-R-O-D-O-N-E. I have his book. Um, 10x, 10x in your income. An amazing dude, an amazing guy. One person I follow back to back. Look what he said about money. Something similar to what Richard um, Robert Kiyosaki said. He said, the rich don't work for money. They make money work for them. So what's the difference between the entrepreneur and the investor? The entrepreneur has built system and work with people, but the investor okay, doesn't have to get people or work with systems. He looks for systems and he invests his money in systems. He looks for entrepreneurs and gives them the money. They do the work with their team. 
So investors fund, they fund entrepreneurs. They give entrepreneurs money. So that's what we also tell people. I say, look, one thing you must understand about raising cash as an entrepreneur is that the investor does not give a self-employed money because he knows he's going to burn out. The day he dies, the business dies. The investor gives people on the right side, his colleague, the entrepreneur, who has built a system, who has a team, who has people. He gives you money. The people who are more likely to raise cash from investors who, you know, are people who are entrepreneurs, who are building teams, who have systems. Does it make any sense at all to anybody? And we have different kinds of investors. We have angel financiers. We have people who give grants. We have venture capitalists and all that. We'll discuss that. I probably will discuss that another time. But this is the point I'm trying to make. So who, what can, if maybe you're an investor, maybe you just say, oh, I'm an investor. And that, I, I want to be an investor. There are three kinds of investors to really look at. And you look at their tendencies and then we'll call it a day. So what type of investor are you? You want money to work for you? You have to find out what type of investor are you? So the first type of investors are called the pre, we have three types basically, pre-investors, passive investors, and active investor. Pre-investor, passive investor, and active investor. Now the pre-investor there looks like people who are not even investors at all. They are just decide, they like investments. They like investment, but they, are, they still learn work. Okay, we'll look at that. Who are they shortly? So pre-investors are people who don't have, they probably like investment, you know, unless you are born with a silver spoon in your mouth and trust fund to match, then you are likely, you likely began life as most of us do a pre-investor. So all of us, we want to invest, we want money to work for us. So we are pre-investors. A pre-investor is simply someone who isn't investing, probably desires to invest, but isn't investing. The pre-investor's financial world is primarily about consumption, which takes precedence over savings and investments. Okay, so that's the negative thing about pre-investors. Most of us are already just consuming, consuming, consuming. We're not thinking about, you know, investing our money. All right. The second kind of people are called, of course, it's far better than the pre-investor, passive investor. Are you a passive investor? Maybe you enjoy, for someone like me, I enjoy entrepreneurship. I enjoy building people. I enjoy building teams. I enjoy creating systems. I run serial businesses. It's my passion. I've identified myself. Okay. And I'm in that space. All right. But I'm also an investor. I also like to invest, but I don't want to actively invest. I want to passively invest. Like the name implies, it means this. Passive investment strategy is good for people with busy lives, families, jobs, outside interests, or entrepreneurs building businesses. So I am building a business. I'm building businesses I don't have all the time. So I can also have some of my money put into you know, some investment passively. I'm not actively involved in seeing how the business. Maybe I put it into cryptocurrency. Maybe I put that business money into Forex. Maybe I put that money into real estate passively. You can choose. And, and this is something I want you to pay attention very carefully. Remember that diagram that we drew? Well, we have it divided into four. We have E, we have S, we have B and Y, remember? So the E are the employees, the S are the self-employees. So do you know that with knowledge, with sufficient knowledge, with financial guide, the S, the person who is the E, who is employee, can use his salary as capital and throw that money to the E or the B, the business owner. I don't even get this. He can, he can use his salary and throw that money to look, identify a business owner who has a fantastic system and say, okay, give me ROI, return on investment. Or he can throw that money from, he can be, you can move from E to I, control money to investors. Same thing with the self-employed person, with knowledge. So one other thing that can move you from left to right is knowledge. Okay, so let's move on. We'll get to that maybe short later. The disadvantage of passive investing, because it has advantages, is the lack of control over your financial security. When you put your money into effects. Oh, somebody comes talking about... Um, Oh, they're going to buy a robot. Let give the money to, to trade for you. That's passive investment. 
when you give a robot money to trade your money for you, that is passive investment. When you give, um, when you have your money just given to somebody to trade for you, not bad, but that's passive investment. Okay, you don't have if something, if anything happens to it, <laughs> it's gone. Okay, because it is passive, it lacks many risk control strategies and overlooks the value added opportunities available only for those with greater risks. All right, so that's important. What more um, disadvantages or what other things? There is Result is the passive investor type endures higher volatility and possible lower returns when compared to successful execution of an active investment strategy. So if you give somebody money to trade for you or to do crypto for you or to do FX for you, whatever amount of money he chooses to give to you is small compared to what he's going to make. So because you're a passive investor, you're going to end smaller. Aside the fact that you're going to lose you're going to earn a little amount of money from that. It's not a bad thing by saying that you can earn more. So the, the next little to so the next type of investor, and of course, you already saw is active investors. Who are active investors? Active investors are people that the primary distinction between passive and active investment strategies is passive investors work hard to acquire and save money but spend far less energy making their money work for them, okay? So they're doing that stuff, okay? And they spend less energy making their money work for them. So, but this is because there's an amount of energy you need to put into your money so that your money can work well for you. That is it, that is it. So active investors have embraced full responsibility for their financial future by not only building investment capital as passive investors, but also taking responsibilities for the return on their invested capital through active strategies that add value. Let me explain that grammar to you. One of the things we're going to do tomorrow, either tomorrow or next, is that we're going to have Michael Asian teach us how to trade Forex directly. Where you can go to the MetaTrader 5, or you can go to the Derive account and trade in the market yourself. That is active investment. That means you are taking the risks yourself. That means you're going for all the knowledge, all the knowledge you can acquire so that whatever money you're making, you're making it maximally. That means you're not meeting any middleman, which is not bad to be a passive, but you're going directly. That is active investment. And there's nothing bad with, about that. In fact, that is a wise thing to do. So uh, one of the things that e-corporatives have decided to do is teach you how to go directly to the FX market. Teach you how to go directly to the cryptocurrency market and put your money there or save your money or trade. Learn how to trade. And he, now he's not going to do it for free, obviously, but as a member of e-corporatives, he'll give a lot of discounts, a lot of, you know, concessions to be given so that you can pay, get, pay that money get the knowledge and start trading yourself as an active so i look forward to him coming tomorrow to teaching us and showing us demystifying effect most of you think that is complex he demystifies it simplifies it shows you how to go to the market space shows you how you can start with your little ten dollars twenty dollars you can manage your risk you can determine what you gain and what you lost everything directly not handing over that money to somebody else that kind of strategy is active investments. Now, there are three types of active investors. We need to just say this as I close. Three types of active investors. Because you can okay. say, okay, I want to be an active investor. But there are three types of active investors. Number one, type of active investors are high risk takers. And maybe you fall into that category. You've got to be careful. I know there are many opportunities out there. Many, many, and they are great ones. Please, if you're just coming to the group, I'd like you to mute your sound. If you just come into the group now, mute your sound or you'll be kicked out. If you just come into the group, mute your sound or you'll be kicked out. So there are high risk takers. Are you, okay, maybe you've chosen to be an active investor. Are you that high risk taker, that high risk taker? Now you've got to be careful, friends. You've got to be careful. You don't want to blow your money out. Blow your money out. You don't want to do that. You want to be more careful. And Somebody just came in and his sound is filtering in. Please mute your sound or excuse us.
sorry about that. We're almost done. We're almost done today. We're almost done. I hope you're getting value. If you're getting value, I'd like you to write in the segment that you're getting value. I'm getting value. Just write in the comment section. Let me know that I'm not just talking to myself. Let me know that we're getting so much value. You know, it's okay. We're talking about high risk takers. I'm waiting for your comments. I appreciate it for you to come and I really want to read it out when you're done. So we have high risk takers. Are you a high risk taker? No, I'm not a high risk taker personally. I don't know about you. There are people who, who hear about the opportunity. Sometimes they punk this scheme. They'll hear about it and they will put in their money, their hard earned money, 100K, 200K, 500K, 600K. They're hoping that it will work out. Or they're hoping that they'll be early birds. And if they put in their money to, oh, well, there are some people who get it who are very lucky. Are you a high risk taker? Now, I think that if you're going to be taking risks, you have to take intelligent risks. You have to take informed risks. Okay? So there are people like that, active people who are like that. Okay? They know how to jump, they know how to take risks, invest in things, and it can be good. I mean, they take huge leverage. It can be good as well as it can be bad. Now, there are certain set of people, I mean, and those kind of people are the ones who play in the FX market. They play in the crypto market. And when they're going to the crypto market, they're going to do Bitcoin that is very volatile or maybe some other um, cryptos or they're they are risking a large amount of money on new coins. You know, there are any new coins that comes, oh, invest there, they're putting their money there. And then the new coins crash or the new coins are what we call shit coins. And then they are no more valuable anymore. Those coins just leave the scene and they lose all their money. Or they put their money, they come into the market space of um, Bitcoin late and they put in so much money and then it crashes from 62,000 to 30 something thousand and they're crying foul. But you know, they also do the Forex. When they're going to Forex, their lot size is always very high, very, very high. You know, their lot size is always very high. They always want to make money. They're, they're not thinking of making target base like Mike taught us the other time, just making a little chunk. They want to be swing traders, not scalpers. These are times you understand when you get into the financial markets. And let me say this to you as you listen to me. The more financial worlds you get acquainted with, the more possibilities financially that you will see. The more financial terms that you get acquainted with, the more financial possibilities you will see. Let me explain that to you. Two children raised by two different parents. The first parent says, go to school, read your books, read physics, read accounting, read all of that stuff. Go to school, go to university, get your NYC, and that's all. Maybe do a few other things, that's all. Second parent, parent B, go to school while you are going to school, learn. He brings stock market, he starts to explain to the child about the stock market. Starts to explain to the child about the FX markets, the financial markets, the commodities market. Begins to break it down to that, get him videos, simple videos, get him tutors to teach him, get him games on finance. Start exposing the child like I'm doing for my children. And then get them to, when they're watching channels, television, they're not interested in the sports, they're interested in the news, the business side. They're thinking about the value of crude oil, the value of brands, the value of commodities. Start forcing them. Now, who of the two people will see money faster for two children? The man who has been exposed to information relating to finance. Same thing. Start reading books on finance. Start reading books on financial. And that's how you're exposed. If don't be afraid of FX. The finance FX market is the hugest and largest financial market in the world. Everybody's playing there. Countries and nations are playing the commodities market, playing the financial market. You want to go there and first way to decode and to break that entire complexity or supposed mystique is to understand the terms and the technologies and you break into that space. You start seeing what others will not be seeing. You'll be watching TV and you'll be seeing money. Others are not seeing money. That is your way to wealth. You cannot capture earn what you have not seen. You cannot capture or earn what you've not seen. Same thing with network marketing. As long as you're on the outside, you will not see, you will see network marketing as a ordeal tax. But the moment you break into that circle, start understanding the terms, look at the history 
Look at what the veterans are saying about it. You'll be shocked at how your eyes will be open to the possibilities in network marketing. There are middle risk takers, okay? And finally, there are people who, that many people that invest in mutual funds, you know, middle risk takers who do mutual funds. And what I like e cooperative is that the e cooperative business I do allows for all kinds of risk takers. Those that are interested in taking high risk, there's the effort, there's the investment part, which is going to be launched out. But before they choose to launch it out, they are working with some experts to say, come and teach us about cryptocurrency. Let us know about it. Let us even begin to play in the market directly. Come and teach us about Forex. Let's know about it. So we can, we can even pay some money and then learn about it before the e corporate dancers can start investing. And then they also have people in the BitNop. When you download your BitNop app, you have the opportunity to either keep your money in USDT or keep your money in Bitcoin. So when you so so mutual funds means cooperative funds. That's what mutual funds means. Coming together, putting funds, investment clubs, and cooperative funds, putting group savings, group funding, group investments, annuities, uh, return on investments that come after a year. You can even invest in pensions. I mean, that is people that are middle risk takers, and then the low risk takers or long-term investors are people who invest in, they don't know how to say, 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 and I like e-cooperative for that. They say, come and save on the platform. Anything you want to do, you can do on the platform. You can sell on the platform. You can invest in FX. Come and save, 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 save. The business I'm talking about is the business you should be involved in. It will teach you finance. It's called e-cooperative Africa. You can save, you can buy, you can invest, you can raise funds for projects. There's a part that I'm waiting for to be activated. That part is called projects. If you go to your dashboard, you see projects. I don't know if anybody here has ever heard of GoFundMe or has ever heard of Donation.ng. I'm just giving other websites. You should not be doing that, but let me just do that. They are they... Now, these platforms enable you to raise funds for maybe... You want somebody sick and you want to raise funds for that person, you should go and create a link from that space and you go share that link. People start donating monies for that. That part is also available on e-cooperative. So you can raise funds for loved ones, for church programs, for anything donation using the link. You can also raise funds for business, just free will from people who want to give you donations, who want to give you grants. There's also that project, that's what it's all about. Most of you don't know what that project is. You want to just give you free donations or and even for businesses that you want to do that they will have interest in it. So we have crowdfunding sites like Kickstarter, Indigo, Band Firm. These are major, go and Google them and check them out. That, that part is in e-cooperative. Anyone think that e-cooperative is here to come and crash is not, not, these guys have not activated yet. Go, they say coming soon. That's another very beautiful, beautiful part. You can raise money to that platform. You can also to raise money from selling. How do you sell? The fastest way to raise money is to sell. Liquidate your liability and raise the capital for your next assets. Liquidate. So you can sell. And e-cooperative gives you that opportunity to sell. All right? That's how to raise. So the e-cooperative.shop, e e-cooperative.shop will be launching out anytime soon. They're on beta phase testing, trying to test, make sure that it's functional and good for you so that you can join the business with just 2000 and you join the business and you're good to go. All right, so beyond that, the core value of this business, why I'm involved, is that you cannot succeed beyond the knowledge available to you. Your knowledge base determines your financial acquisition. And even if you have so much money, how well you keep that money or how well you multiply that money will be dependent on the wisdom that is used to appropriate the money that's available to you. Making money, managing money, multiplying money, preserving money, passing down money is dependent on knowledge. There's a, there's a amount of knowledge dependent for all of these parts, making, managing, multiplying, and all of that. And so e cooperative has identified that and has created a learning material session that will be increasing by the day so that you can have access to videos, audios, materials that you can read again and again that will guide your financial destiny. Wealth does not come by accident, comes by deliberate learning. So that's, those are the beautiful things. 
So the summary of what they do in that space is that they can, you can save, you can raise funds, you can invest, you can do e-commerce, you can do investments. How do you join? e company says you need to support somebody in the system already. That person is called your sponsor. You're going to person is already already has a link. Is already a member of the cooperative. The person will give you a referral link. You go there. You register. You give the person money. Two thousand naira. You begin with only two thousand naira. The beauty of this business is just two thousand naira. Nobody is taking your two thousand naira. You will still spend that money. Start with it, and you give two thousand naira to that person. You you get the link. Register and upgrade and give two thousand naira to that person. All right, and that's what you need basically to be a part of the business is your email address, your phone number at the bank account and your beaten up address or user ID. That's all. You're good to go. So you start that way. The woman to give you activate the mode to level one, you're going to be given a welcome package, a data marketing training on your dashboard. You have access to savings in crypto and in Naira. You have access to the e-commerce and you can also begin to invest in the product. So many things, the value. You get data marketing training straight to your dashboard, amazing value that you get. And the next thing they tell you is work with the power of four. So you give 2,000 naira straight. You get back the 2,000 naira demands one person signs up. Now, if you are interested in building a team, like I would encourage you to do, because that's where the big money is, all right? So if you're not interested, you can just pay the 2,000 naira and then you're enjoying the other benefits. You are enjoying the e-com, you're enjoying the investment and all that stuff. All right. But if you want to build a team and, you know, earn more money, then you go, go and work with the power of four. All right. Just invite four people. And this is how it works. You have to work with four people above you. You're going to support the projects of, it's a cooperative. So you're going to support the projects of four people above you, four uplines, four sponsors. The first one being your direct sponsor, that beautiful lady. Lady there. Let's call her Jane. Jane is your direct sponsor. Jane has a sponsor. Let's call that man on the suit. Let's call him Joe. Joe has a sponsor. Let's call the lady out there, Kate. And the final person, let's call him Philip. Now your four direct sponsors you're going to support at some point in your business. And what you simply need to do to move from level zero, one Jane gives you her referral links and you register. You know, you need to upgrade. You're supposed to give Jane 2,000 naira. The moment you give Jane 2,000 naira and she activates you, you get materials on your dashboard. You have access to all those other opportunities. The value exchange materials on your dashboard, you know, access to the e-commerce which you can sell and so on. And if that's all you want to do, that's fine. But if you want more, then you have to work with the power of four persons. Once you share your link with those four persons and they give you money to 2,000 naira each, the money is given directly to you into your a bank account so you're going to receive eight thousand naira, all yours and if that is your financial goal you can say that is where i want to stop but if i want more then i'll go back to my dashboard and click on upgrade now if i stop at even at that first level at 8k i've gotten back my money i've gotten eight thousand naira. the system is designed in such a way that your four are not stranded but if you want to more you click on upgrade and level two person shows up and then you take four thousand and give to joe once you've given Joe 4,000 and you activate your second level, you know, second level. All right. So when these four persons go and bring four people each, you're going to have 16 people at your second generation or your second tier. That is four will bring four, 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 four. That's 16 people. Now, when the 16 people want to move to level two, just like you gave 4,000 around to Joe to move to level two and he activated you, the 16 people will see your details on their dashboard. They will see your account details, you'll see your beaten up um, uh, user ID, and they'll be told to send 4,000 Naira to you. If all of them give you 4,000 Naira, that means that you'll be ha you would have credit credited directly into your bank account um, 4,000 Naira times 16, amounting to 64,000 Naira. Plus, you're going to have access to new materials, new materials at a higher level than what you got in level one. If that's your financial destiny, your financial goal, you can say, okay, I'm not interested. Or if you want more, you click on upgrade and then case details will appear. You take 8,000 and give to Kate. He activates you. You move to level three. Your third generation um, level will also be activated. When 16 people bring in their four each, that will be 64% at the, the third generation. When they want to move to level three, just like you give 8K to Kate, they will see your details and each of them will give you 8,000 naira each amounted to 512,000 naira. Now, that is where you're born. That's great. 
But if you want more, like I do want more, you can click on the last stage for level four. Philip will appear. You give her, her um, you give him sixteen thousand naira. You give him sixteen thousand naira. Now these sixty-four persons are going to bring four persons each. Amount is two hundred fifty-six people. When you want to move to level four, they're going to see your details, and each of them. Then we'll give you 16,000 naira each amounting to 4 million 96,000 naira. So let's do your account balance. Your account balance is the total amount of money that you earned, the 8,000 you earned from four persons, the 64,000 you earned from 16 people, the 512,000 you earned from 64 people, the 4 million 96,000 you earned from 256 people, totaling 4 million 680,000. And that is how much you earned. How, let's see how much you gave out your credit. You gave 2,000 naira to Jane, 4,000 naira to Joe at the second level, generation upline. You give eight thousand naira to Kate for level three. You give sixteen thousand naira to Philip for level four, totaling thirty thousand naira. So if you subtract thirty thousand naira from four million six hundred eighty thousand naira, you're going to have four million six hundred and fifty thousand naira. You only began with two thousand naira and the power and the power of four. I hope that this idea, this fantastic idea, great great idea, great great business idea. I feel that you should do it. And whoever invited you to join this business, I'd like you to quickly rush and meet them. Tell them, guy, I'm interested in this business. I'm interested in what you just shared. I want to be part of that training. If you don't have a sponsor and you came along here, you can go to www.ecopy.africa and quickly click on that link and get signed up. I hope you got some value today. I hope you got some value. I'll just take two questions and we'll call it a wrap for today. Okay, I'm getting value, I'm getting value, I'm getting value. I'm getting value, I'm getting value, I'm getting values, I'm getting value, much value, I'm getting value, getting value. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So let's take one question. You can unmute your mic now. I will take one or two questions and then we'll call it a wrap for today. Tomorrow will be exciting. Invite your people. All of you that have had misunderstanding about FX, let them show you exactly what it's all about. Decode, demystify it. We'll start with that. And then we'll bring out the time to for other speakers that will come in. Some of the top most speakers will be joining us in this program. Anybody wants to say something? Anybody wants to say something? Anybody? All right.